Hey, this is Matt. Welcome back to another edition to Eat 3D Animation Advice being given out free for you to educate yourself, get better, become a better artist, learn something new, and so on and so forth. So with this one, we're going to focus on a run. And I'm just going to be breaking down the main poses of the run cycle, and most of that's going to be handled in the second video. This one here is just more of an introduction to what everything's going to, what I'm going to cover. And an introduction to the rig and the rigging interface that came with the animation rigging toolset created by the fabulous Jeremy Ernst over at uh, Epic Games. And just take a brief look at that with how, you know, just looking at what I'm going to use and what I will typically use from it. I'm going to go over that and also bring up a plugin that I just purchased the other day that's an amazing addition to my tool set, along with Tween Machine, uh, Pose to Shelf, and Arc Tracker, and ZB Paramaster. My toolbox is looking pretty good. So, without further ado, let's get started. So right off the bat, you recognize this character most likely, and it is the fabulous, fabulous, swaying hips vampire man from some of the other E3D tutorials. Say hello. Hi. So I rigged him with the animation rigging tool set, and it's very easy to use. It maybe took me 10 minutes to set him up. So he is all set up, and one of the things that comes with the tool set is an animation interface. And it sits tucked away over here in the dock, so you can always just get rid of it, put it to sleep, you have more space, call it up when you need to. I don't typically use a lot of this, selecting things with the leg. I'll just keep it hidden and do that with myself here. Now, I will bring it up if I need to do switches. Switches between FK and IK mode. Same with the right and left. Change any of these attributes that I need to. We have FK, IK mode, obviously. We also have the M orientation space. So let's say I take the arm, and is right now it's oriented to the body. So when it moves, it doesn't completely move with it versus if I orientate it to the clavicle, then it's going to move like this. The same thing goes with the arm, the head. You can get it so that as you're and typically what I'll do is just have it facing straight so it doesn't move, doesn't look left or right. I'll just do that when I'm doing a sort of a cycle like this because then I can go in afterwards and then add life to it, then add the overlap and follow through and then the whatever else I need to add to it. I can do that at the end. Yeah, there we go. So other features it has, selections, zeroing things out, exporting import and exporting animation. Um, one of the main things I'll be using it for is the pose editor, which we'll be looking at a little bit more later. And basically what it is, I can set up poses to save, for one. I mean, I can set up a whole range of hand poses, which are always nice because sometimes it's a pain to constantly have to set up a new, if you have to set up a fist every time or a relaxed hand or an intense hand or a trigger finger or whatever. So let's say, oops, forgot the rotations. So basically, pull all of this to zero, and it recognizes I didn't label it properly. I should have labeled it left fist, but it on automatically knows I hit that. It puts that into the fist mode. Okay, I can even right click on it and say load mirrored pose, and it'll go to the other one. So pretty awesome. Well, not pretty awesome. It's very awesome. And I have all the different run poses saved out, I have an idle pose saved out. It's basically you're creating a library of poses that you can use right now, later on, whatever. So the other thing I wanted to talk about is the plugin that I came across the other day. And it's like 25 bucks, but with what I'm about to show you what it does, it's worth it, worth every penny. It's worth avoiding a really bad meal that's going to give you food poisoning and make you regret that you went out to that really bad greasy spoon hole in the wall. So what it is, is this guy built a player, but on top of that, he made a mail or a Python script that allows it to sync up with the timeline. So right now, obviously I don't have any, it's not moving at all, but then I select sync and 
the reference footage syncs up immediately. The benefits that come from this are fantastic. If I had something that was this, some type of walk where the character was like 400 pounds, had all this, you know, maybe had a couple of tentacle arms and really had this crazy wide stance in how he walks where he shifts all of his weight over to one foot and then the other because his legs are strong enough to support him. He doesn't take small steps. And there's like maybe a lot of muscle under this 400 pounds, but there's also a lot of fat. So maybe it's 200 pounds fat, 200 pounds muscle. I don't know. And so what does that guy look like when he walks? I mean, I rely so much on reference that I'm most likely going to pile a bunch of stuff on top of me, pick up a couch or something and walk and videotape that and see how that, how that, uh, see how that feels and see how I react. But I'm also going to look at, look into movies online and, or you know, find Netflix and take a clip of something or, um, maybe find someone who's extremely fat, morbidly obese and watch that person walk and then just make up the other stuff. Maybe even find like an octopus tentacle online and see how that moves. And, you know, you know, automatically assume how you're going to animate that, but you can find something online that is just has so much character to it. They're like, no, 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 that's what I'm going to use. So being able to load things like that up into this and to match it over time if needed, or just borrow poses from, that's another thing too. I might not, I might want, want like three poses from this, but it's a lot better than having to control or alt tab or command tab to go constantly back and forth to the quick time. Or if you have a second monitor, it's, you know, you have to switch, you know, move over to the monitor and look at it, go back to your Maya file or whatever. It's, this is amazingly useful, especially when you get into action and combat and, and stuff like that. So it's cool. Check it out if you want. I think it's awesome. And I hope you do too. And so does Mr. Vampire. <laughs> me too. Let me bow to you. So with the next video, we're going to get into the actual meat of the, the topic. Breaking down the run cycle, breaking down the poses, really just focusing on the core and the legs. I'm not concerned at first. I'm not concerned in the next video about the top part of the body because we're really, if you don't get the core working, if you don't get the, the hips and the legs and the feet working correctly, it doesn't matter. Nothing else is going to work. If the bottom part doesn't work, the top isn't going to save it if it looks awesome. It doesn't matter. It's just going to look like contradicting animations. You're going to look like one guy handled the top and another guy handled the bottom. So it's not going to work. So we'll focus on that. Look at some of that stuff. And uh, yeah, so I will speak to you with in the next video.